Hi kids, welcome to the joy of art. I'm Jim Pence, your instructor, and today we're going to do a picture of a lighthouse. Now the Apostle Paul was shipwrecked three times, and the ship of that day and the sailors of that day would have loved to have had lighthouses, but they didn't. Back then, the sea and the ocean was a terrifying place because storms would come up, ships were dashed against rocks, and many people lost their lives in the sea. Years later, people developed lighthouses, just little places on the rocks that would shine a light out to warn ships that there was danger coming. Paul didn't have those, but he wished he would have. So we're going to do a picture of a lighthouse today on the rocks, and we're going to do it in what's called mixed media. That means we're going to be using watercolors, we're going to be using pen and ink, and we're going to be using fluorescent or black light crayon to create a picture of a lighthouse, and the cool thing about this lighthouse picture is that when you turn off the lights and put a black light on it, that lighthouse will light up and shine on the boat that is out in the water and maybe in danger of being dashed on the rocks. So let's look at what we're going to do, and then let's look at what we're going to need to do it. This is our picture that we're going to do today. It's going to have a pretty blue sky with some clouds in it. Then we're going to have some still ocean down here and a little boat in the distance, and then we're going to draw a lighthouse. This will be in pen and ink, and right up at the top, you can see that lighthouse has sort of a yellowish light, and that yellowish light's going to glow out. We'll see it radiating out so that the boat has somewhere to look, and we will watch the stars in the sky light up when we turn that black light off. Now, what we need to do to do a good watercolor picture, we need two gallons of water. The reason you need a lot of water is because you're going to clean your brush off a lot. When you clean your brush off, it's going to get dirty, the water's going to get muddy, and you don't want to take that dirty water and bring it back down onto your painting. So you always need two pretty large containers of water. I use old milk jugs just with the top cut off. And so we will use those to keep our water nice and clean and to keep the, the picture nice and clean. We're going to need a little bit of paper towel. The paper towel is to blot our brushes off with because with watercolor, if you have a lot of water, the, the color is lighter. If you have less water, the color is darker. And so sometimes we're going to want a lot of water and other times we're going to want less because we want darker color. And that's when we want to use the blotter to clean off and dry off our brushes. We're going to need watercolor paper. For watercolor paper, you can go to just about any store that sells art supplies and pick up a tablet. This one is 9 by 12, and if you look inside, it's just thick, thick white paper. And the reason you need thick paper is because it's got to hold a lot of water. And if you use just regular drawing paper, it won't work well because there's just not enough paper there to hold the water. We're going to need for this picture as well a little bit of masking tape. So if you have some of that around the house, be sure and get some of that up. We'll need a flat brush. This is just a craft brush. It's just a piece of foam, but that's what we're going to use to put the water on the paper. You'll want to use a pencil to sketch your picture in. Now I won't use one. I'm going to use a marker, but the pencil will help you draw your lighthouse. And again, if you don't get it just quite right, then you can erase it and change it and then later go over it with a marker. You're going to need a flat brush. This is a number 12 flat watercolor brush. That's going to let us do some detail work and make our water, uh, our ocean water, look realistic. It's pretty easy to do. You're going to need a round brush. Okay, This is a number 10 round. And what we're going to use the round brush for is creating our sky and putting clouds in the sky and making it look really, really dramatic. For the lighthouse, we're going to need some permanent markers. Make sure on the side of the marker that it says permanent, because if you use a regular marker, it's water-based. And when you put the water on the paper, it's going to bleed and it's not going to look good. So be sure that it says permanent somewhere on the marker. We've got two different kinds. We've got a sharp point and I'm going to have one that's a blunt point. The sharp point will be to put in the detail and the blunt point will be to color it in a little bit faster and to make sure that we don't leave any white spots behind. We're going to need our colored crayon, our, our black light crayon. This one is going to light up our lighthouse. We're going to use it to put some stars in the sky. It's going to really look cool when that black light comes on. 
And then, of course, we're going to need some watercolors. You can buy these in the store. They're fairly cheap, just a few dollars. I like to get the kind that have 16 or 24 different colors. That way, I've got a lot of options and I don't have to mix a lot of colors. So be sure and get some good ones and get some bright ones. When you have all of those together, there's one other thing you need, and that is a black light. Because if you don't have a black light, you're not going to be able to see that lighthouse light up. So this is a little see the light black light, and you can get one of these. And then when you turn on that black light and turn out the rest of the lights in the room, you're going to see a really cool effect. And we'll do that right at the end of our picture. So with that in mind, let's do a really cool watercolor picture. And the first thing we need is our watercolor paper. This is 9 by 12, which means it's a little bit bigger than a regular sheet of like notebook paper or, or typing paper or paper that would be in your printer. But we're not going to use that whole sheet because watercolor paper likes to bend, it likes to, to uh, curl. And so if we make it a little bit smaller, it's going to be easier to work with. So I'm just going to fold it over, make sure the ends meet. Kind of tricky sometimes. There we go. I'm going to hold down one end and then I'm going to just come across and push down the other end. And then because this paper is very stiff, it's really easy to just fold it back and forth. You do that several times and work the crease. And then once you've got a pretty good crease there, then I'm going to take the very top of it and just very carefully just tear just a little bit. Not very much at all. Then I'll take this and lay it down. I'm going to put one hand on top and hold that end down. And then I'm going to just gently pull down and away. And when I do that, it's going to give me a nice, clean tear and a sheet that is six inches by nine inches. So that's what we're going to work with today. I'm going to put the other paper away. We're going to take our six by nine. And this time we're going to work with it sideways. This is called a landscape orientation. So we're going to put it sideways and we're going to start by sketching in our uh, lighthouse. Now for beginners you may want to use a pencil because if you make a mistake drawing your lighthouse you can always change it and fix it and then once you have it the way you want it then you can come with your marker and just trace on top of it. But uh, so you can see it better I'm going to work with the marker uh, right from the beginning. Now the first thing I'm going to do is draw the rocky hill where the lighthouse is going to be. And to do that I'm just going to start uh, almost a, a third of the way up the paper, right about there, and I'm going to just draw a kind of a ragged rocky line and it's going to come down and kind of meet the other end of the paper again not quite halfway across. Okay, so we've got our, our rocky outcropping. This is, these are the dangerous rocks that could sink the ship. So once I have that there, I'm going to go in and color. But to, to color the rest of it, it's a little easier if you use your broad point marker. You can use the, the fine point one, but it takes a lot longer. So I'm going to just come in. Now one thing as you, as you do this, uh, be sure that you have something under your paper. If you're working on your dining room table, kitchen table, kitchen counter, uh, you don't want to get permanent marker on it. So uh, you can put, here's a nice drawing board. Uh, you can actually take your watercolor pad if you want to, flip it over, and you can put that right on that. That makes it a nice surface that will keep you from getting permanent marker on a surface that it won't come out of very easily. So let's go ahead and color this in very quickly. It shouldn't take very long uh, with, a, with a nice broad marker. And if you want to, you may want to pause the DVD at this point because this takes a few minutes. All right, once you have your rocky outcropping colored in, then it's time to draw the lighthouse. So what we want to do is we want to put away our broad point and we want to go back to the sharp point marker. Now the lighthouse is pretty easy to draw. Again, if you want to make sure your lines are straight, you can get a ruler or even the side of, of your 
watercolor tablet, but uh, it's fairly easy because it, we're not making a, just a real big lighthouse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw one straight line, just like this. And it's, it's not straight up and down, it's a little bit at an angle. Okay, you see that? And the reason, if you see lighthouses, a lot of times they tend to be bigger at the bottom uh, than they are at the top. And so we want to make our lighthouse just a little bit bigger at the bottom. So now I'm going to come over just a little bit, right about there. And I'm going to draw another line. This one is, is also going to go out just a little bit. Just going to bring it down there. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is if you, again, if you look at pictures of lighthouses, a lot of times they have what looks like a little railing right near the top and that's where the lighthouse keeper would go out to clean the the glass and all of the different parts and that's how they would get in to maybe fix the the lights so I'm gonna draw a straight line across about like that okay and then I'm gonna come up just a little bit okay not very far and then I'm gonna come across one more time so I've got my railing now I'm going to draw the light part, and that's going to be a little bit more narrow, and it is going to go straight up and down as much as I can do it. Okay, I'm not using a ruler, so I'm just eyeballing this and, and hoping to get pretty close. Okay, and that's, that's about it. Okay, and then I'm going to come across the top one more time, and I'm going to put a little dome right on the top just to give it some shape. And... I don't know why I put that part there. I just like how it looks. So we're going to do that. Now I'm going to color in this little dome. And I'm going to come down here below and I'm going to color in the rail. I'm going to leave the light part white. Okay, I don't want to put anything in there because that's where we're going to put our black light uh, uh, crayon so that it will shine as a light. So we want to keep that part white. I'm going to come down here and this isn't very much space so most of the time I'll just use my sharp marker. If it was a great big space I'd go back to the uh, to the broad point but uh, for this little bit it's easy enough to just color this in real quick here. Right, so I get my lighthouse nice and black. And we're done with the first part. That was easy, wasn't it? Now it's time to get ready to put in our blue sky. We're going to put in a blue sky with some white clouds and we're also going to draw some water. Well, we want to do something to make our water look nice and flat like it would if we were at the ocean. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a little masking tape and it's, it's called masking tape for a reason. It's because you're masking something that you don't want paint to touch. So what we're going to do is we're going to just take this masking tape and try to get it pretty flat. You know, with, a, with an ocean or a lake, you don't want it leaning. You want it nice and flat. If it's leaning, all the water runs out. So sometimes I will pick it up and I'll move back a little bit just to look at it. And if it looks like it's pretty flat, then I'm going to just leave it like that. I'm not going to push just real hard because we don't want it to tear the paper when we pull it off. This isn't going to stay on there very long. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing just below it. We're going to protect that. Now some, some color will bleed through. Uh, you're, you're not going to have it perfect, so don't be disappointed when we get done with the sky and you see a little bit of blue coming down here. That's not going to be a problem. So. Make sure that you've covered it up where you want your water. And then I'm going to cover one more thing up. And this is a little bit more difficult because it's not a very big space. But I'm going to just tear a little chunk of masking tape off. And I'm actually going to tear that even a little bit smaller. And I'm going to cover up my lighthouse light. And that piece there looks perfect. So I'm going to just put that there. I'm going to let the rest of it just go down into the lighthouse. doesn't really matter because no paint's going to get there anyway. So now I've got it so that I can paint over top of this and keep these areas white. That's something you do a lot when you're working with watercolors is mask areas that you don't want the paint to hit. All right, now it's time to get the watercolors out. So let's bring those over. We're going to use, first of all, our big craft brush to get the paper nice and wet and then we're going to come in with our colors. Now this time you don't need much color because 
we're just using blue. We're going to do a nice blue sky. And so we'll actually only use one color in this picture. So for starters, we're going to come in and get some water. Remember, when you work, you need a clean jar and a dirty jar. I'm going to get my craft brush nice and wet. And I'm going to just get this paper pretty soaked. I'm going to come across it. Again, you can paint right over your lighthouse and the rocks because it's permanent marker. It's not going to make a difference. But you need to do it enough so that the paper doesn't dry too quickly. Because what we're going to do here in the sky, we're going to do what's called a wash. And a wash is a lot of water and a lot of paint put in very quickly so that we can get some nice clouds and sky. Okay, that paper is about right. Now what I'm going to do also is get a little water in my blue pan there. So I'm, I'm coming in again to my clean and I'm just soaking up a little and I'm just going to squeeze a few drops in there to get that water ready. And then I'll squeeze that brush out and I'm going to put it aside because I won't need it for a while. I'm going to take my round brush and come in and start to mix that color up. Now when I come in here to do my sky, I want to leave a lot of white because that white is going to turn into clouds. So I don't want to come in and just cover the whole thing with blue. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here very fast and I'm just going to splash some blue in different places. Okay, but remember I'm leaving a lot of white. I'm going to hit a couple of the corners here just because it's nice to have the color at the edges. Okay, all right. Now that doesn't look like much right now, but here comes the fun part. First I'm going to clean out my brush. I always do that first so that I don't accidentally pick it up and put color where I don't want it. Then I'm going to blot it out. And now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to pick up my paper and I'm just going to rotate it. I, I, I call this the steering wheel motion. And I'm just going to pretend like it's a steering wheel on a car. I'm going to let those colors just bleed and go different directions. Okay, and then I'm going to set it back down. Then I'm going to make sure that my brush is pretty dry. And I'm going to look for puddles. If I've got any puddles in there, I want to kind of soak those out a little bit. And I'm going to come around just to the edges and just touch the edges just a little bit. I'm not going to do a lot because I don't want to lose. All that white is good. All that white, when it dries, is going to turn into nice pretty clouds. I've got a little bit too much white there behind the lighthouse, so I'm going to bring in a little bit of color. Okay, but now what we're going to do is dry that paper while well, we still have the clouds. So there are two ways to dry it. You can just sit and let it sit for a half hour and it'll dry by itself. Uh, if you have a fan, you can put it in front of a fan. Or if you have a blow dryer and mom will let you use it or she'll help you, then uh, use a blow dryer and dry it out. And once your paper's dry, then we'll pick it up and we'll go to the next part of our picture. All right, once your paper is dry, we're ready to go on to the next step. Now, I used a blow dryer to dry mine, and if you notice, the blow dryer actually softened the edges there and kind of made the clouds look a little bit more cloud-like. And that's one of the advantages of using something like that. But again, you don't have to. You can just let it sit, and it'll dry naturally. Now, the next thing we have to do is take off our masking tape so that we can work in these other areas. So I'm going to go up to my lighthouse first and just gently pull the masking tape off. Just get my fingernail under it. And, okay, we had a little bleed through, but that's okay. That happens. Okay, and I've, looks like I've got some more down here, so let's pull this away and see what happened down here. Well, not as much as I thought. Got a little bit coming down, but we're gonna take care of that. So just p pull it off as carefully as you can. Sometimes when you do this, a little piece of the, the top of the paper uh, will tear loose and uh, there's not really much you can do about it, but don't worry too much if that happens because it still turns out as a, as a nice painting. Okay, I'm going to take my masking tape and just get it out of the way. Okay, now we have a nice line of the ocean, but if it gets white, that means the ocean's frozen, and we know that's not the case. So we want to make sure our ocean looks nice and blue. And what we're going to do this time is we're going to use a flat brush. Now, there are two ways to do this. You could 
come in and just take your watercolor uh, blue and just go right along there and just paint in blue solid. Uh, but remember, when you're looking at water and you see the surface of the water, most of the time what you're seeing is the reflection of the sky. Now this isn't a stormy sea, so we're not going to paint a lot of waves in, but we are going to let some of the white show through uh, just so that it looks a little bit more like uh, an ocean or uh, water that's, that's being blown around a little bit. Again, we're not going to get just go crazy with it. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my flat brush, I'm going to go into my clean water, and once you've been painting for a while, you can, you can tell which one is which because the, the dirty water will take on the colors that you've been using. So I'm just going to get it wet a little bit. I'm going to blot that off. And so now I'm going to come in and I'm going to work in here just a little bit. Now this, this is still nice and wet, still very strong color. I'm going to use the tip of my brush and I'm going to come right on that shoreline, or not the shoreline, but the horizon line, and I'm going to go just kind of sideways and come right down the edge. Now if you want to be sure that you don't end up going up into the sky, you can take some masking tape and put it on the other side where the sky is that you painted and that can kind of help you from accidentally going up into the sky with your water. I'm going to just hope my hand is steady enough. And now I've got some paint laid in there. What I'm going to do is come back here. I'm going to clean that out. Okay, blot it. Okay, I'm going to come in my clean water and I'm going to just start pulling that color down. Okay, I'm just coming in. This is just pure clean water. I already laid in some paint. Now, the main thing is you have to work, again, kind of fast because the, the paint will dry, and if it dries, it's hard to work with. I'm going a little bit sideways, and you see I'm leaving a little bit of white through. Always clean your brush out and then come in. Okay, I'm going to pull more of that down. Just coming almost like a, a scribbling motion with just clean water. Okay, that's all that I'm using right now. The only color I put was what I put right at the, right at the horizon line where the, the, the ocean meets the sky. I'm going to bring that across, going to blot it a little bit, clean it out. I'm just going to dip in a little bit more. I'm going to pull that through. Okay, and then I'm going to go back into that blue just a little bit, not a lot. I'm going to just do some more lines like that and a little bit of waves. And then I'm going to just smooth it out right here at the bottom. Now, the last thing that we're going to put in is a little sailboat. And I'm going to go into the blue again. And I'm going to draw the, the sailboat in blue. And I'm going to put it here kind of near the horizon line. And I'm just going to kind of tap in. A little triangle. This part is, is tricky, so take your time. Just a little triangle like that. And then I'm going to come on the other side of it. I'm going to just put another triangle in right about here. I'm going to use the corner of the brush. And just very gently pull up. Okay, got my, got my triangle. And then I'm going to go across the bottom again. Now you might say, why are you using blue since everything else is blue? Well, I'm going to turn the paper because that sometimes makes it a little easier to get this last part in there. Remember, if this, if this boat is way off in the distance, then you're not going to see it in real, real dark colors because if you see it in dark colors, like if I did it in black, uh, it would bring it way up close. So we're using the same blues to pull that boat a little further off in the distance. So we've got a little bit of a sailboat there. So that is all we need to do in the painting. Now you may again want to wait until this dries. Uh, I'm not going to use a blow dryer this time, uh, but if you keep working right now, just be real careful that you don't get your hand into the wet paint. All right, we're ready for the third part of our picture, and that's where we're going to put the black light effect in. Now for that, all we need is our extreme color crayon. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up into the light part of the lighthouse. Okay. So I'm going to come up here and I'm just going to color that in. And you almost can't see it. There's a, just a, it, it gives it a little bit of a color, uh, but it's not far from the white. Now, I'm going to just take the crayon and I'm going to pull some shiny rays out here and you can make it as, as long as you want to. I'm going to just go a little ways. And then I'm going to throw some out the other side, just like that. And then, because this is nighttime, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to just put some dots in the sky that are going to be stars. And then the last thing I'm going to do, I need to make sure that my boat is dry. I'm going to put just a little bit of highlight on the boat, okay, so that we can see that boat when the black light comes on. And then I'm going to go down into the water and I'm going to just draw some horizontal lines that are reflecting on the water. Once I have that on, that's pretty much our finished picture. And then we can turn on our black light and we'll see that lighthouse light up. I am the light of the world, Jesus said. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Well, that's our picture for today. I hope you've had fun doing it, and I hope you'll have fun sharing it with your friends. And most of all, I hope you'll join me next time for the joy of art.